Hey everyone, in this video we are going to be looking at how to rig a stretchy dress. I originally made this dress for my Cybergirl project. I wanted something that acted mostly like cloth, but without the difficulties of getting into using cloth simulation itself. The dress I've made can handle pretty extreme angles, about as extreme as the underlying body can handle, and it has controls to automatically pull up the leg a bit while the leg raises, and bones to tweak that amount even more. See how much it can handle going forward and back. This dress we're looking at here is the detailed version of the mesh. Underneath is the actual rigged version. The detailed mesh is then attached to it with the surface deform modifier. The dress uses bones and several modifiers to work. It uses several layers of corrective smooth and also shrink wrap to stay above the surface and a few other things. Since originally making it, I have improved on the method. I'll be showing you how to make just the skirt portion in this demo file that uses slightly less modifiers and slightly more bones to have more control and overall better results than my original. We'll be going through all of the details of how to model the skirt mesh, set up the bones, modifiers, drivers, etc., as well as understanding the limits and how to tweak the setup. You can follow along with your own character, or you can pick up this demo file with the completed skirt and the skirt at various stages of construction for a few dollars on Gumroad or Patreon if you want to help support me. Let's start with a look at the body and rig we'll be working on top of. This is a piece of the body for my Reimu and Cybergirl projects. It's rigged with Rigify with a few extra bits I've added that we'll go over. The skirt rigging methods we'll be learning will work on pretty much any body, so don't worry if yours is quite different from mine, either in style or quality. It's fine to use something straight out of a character generator or whatever if you're just following along. I'm not releasing my full character's body because there's still too many issues with it at this point, but if you want to follow along exactly, you can get this piece of it in the file that will be accompanying this video. I've hidden most of the rig as it's not relevant. Only the leg bone motions really matter. Let's take a look at the current state of our deforms. If I move the leg in this direction, it pinches about here. And that is... I actually don't have a good idea of how realistic that is or not. I'm not strong enough on anatomy. But I know it's not distorting as badly as it could be. For example, if I disable the corrective smooth, then it's much worse. So I don't have a good idea of exactly what this is supposed to be doing, but this is fairly functional. When I originally made this body, it was for the Reimu character who wears a lot of cloth, so you couldn't see how bad some of these were. From this angle, we can see that we have decent volume preservation here, and that is thanks to some extra bones I've added to the rig. This body is using various corrective bones. These are bones that have low influence and automatically move as the leg is moved. If we reset this, we can see as this rotates, this bone is moving out and it's dragging the rear down to preserve some of the volume. This is achieved with the transformation constraint. If I disable that, we can see what it would look like without it, where I'm losing a ton of the volume in the rear here. And if we also disable corrective smooth, then things get pretty gross. I'm showing these things because we'll be using similar methods on our skirt to fix its shape and because we're going to have to make it work around whatever the shape of our body is. So if you had a stock rigify rig with no corrective bones or shape keys, then you would likely have something that looks more like this. So the motion we're getting from this bone is that it's pulling down and back from its original position. And it does that in an amount based on the rotation of the thigh. We also have these inner thigh bones. These don't do anything when the thigh rotates forward on the x-axis. They only do anything when it rotates sideways. And we can see from their transformation that they are pulling back towards the groin to stop this topology from stretching out too much. And again, if we look at that without corrective smooth, then things get pretty bad here, and we don't have enough loops here anymore. I'm not going to go into the details of how I set up these correctives in this video, 
I will put a link in the description to some excellent tutorials by Dan Pro, who talks about making corrective bones like this. Although, basically, they're only going to be as good as your knowledge of anatomy. But I can say that if you just use a stock rigify rig without any sort of corrective bone or shape keys, then you will have lots of problems. But even if that's the state of your model, don't worry, our skirt rig will work around that. Now we'll model the skirt. Here's the version I made while planning this video. It uses a mirror modifier. Unmirrored, we have 17 vertices around the top, same amount all the way down, and 9 high. The exact amount of vertices you need will depend on how large. You might decide to add some more loops, but that'll be easy to do, as you'll see. We'll start with a fresh plane. Rotate it 90. We're going to size it from the side here. I've marked the bottom of my previous skirt, so I'm cheating a bit. You can decide how long you want it to be, but you can't go too long with the method we're going to be doing. I would suggest try building at the current si uh, size that I'm doing before you make it much longer. Shorter will definitely work. I want this first patch to be seven loops wide. So I will cut in five more and rotate the top a bit to line up with where it'll end up. And it's going to be nine high, so seven more cuts. And then we can turn on snapping to face and snap it to the model. Now, keeping snap on, I'm going to set up a bit and extrude two more loops about to the edge of the third of the curve of the thigh on the front and the same thing on the back that's wrapped around quite a bit but we're not actually going to worry about it yet that'll get cleaned up in a minute now we'll clean up these points that got messed up in the projection we'll use proportional editing i've got inverse square on just so we can move these back more towards the right area and on the front as well, still with face snapping on. It doesn't matter that we're making the rest of these a bit jumbled. Next, with snapping and proportional editing off, we'll extrude this inward on X. I've got my 3D cursor at zero, so I can go to 3D cursor and do an X, SX zero to snap all that to zero on the X axis. And we'll do the same in the back. Now we need to make sure it's clean on the y-axis. This looks okay, but in the front, it's clipping into the body. So I'm going to go to median point and do an S, Y, 0 to align on the y-axis and drag that forward a bit. Now let's clean up this loop. We can do a active element, select the top point, select the rest of the loop. i got to select the top point last, so that's the active point. Then we can do an S, X, 0 and an S, Y, 0 to align those. And then I'm actually gonna rotate it a bit on X around that point, just to create our bottom here. Then let's see, on our back point, things are a bit messier here for a different reason. For this rear loop, we're gonna use the good old loop tools add-on, which comes with Blender by default, so you can enable that if you don't have it. Grab a few of these points and pull them in a bit. Let's snap them to the face, actually. Then we can select all of that and hit flatten, and that's looking pretty good. And then I'll hit G to project it to the face from camera again. Now we need two more loops cut in. Two back here, and two in the front here. That's messed up our vertex density a little bit, but that's brought us to the full 17 around that we need. So now we need to distribute these vertex uh, loops more evenly. We want to make sure they stay on the surface properly, so let's get ourselves a shrink wrap modifier. And we'll set it to target normal project, as that's the highest quality. Now the immediate problem we have is that it's shrink wrapping the parts that are overlapping thin air to the nearest point of the body. So we're going to need a vertex group to stop that. Let's disable it, and we will select all, and then deselect the parts that are pre-floating in the front and the back. 
and add all the rest to a vertex group that we'll call and crap. Assign it. And these ones can come out too, I think. We'll, we can manually move those back a bit on Y as we'll need to properly uh, plan out how far we want this area to be from the body. And our shrink trap should have a little bit of a distance. Let's try a little more. Let's go ab uh, above surface. We want a little bit of a margin from the body. Now that the shrink wrap will keep them at about the right distance from the surface, we can do our actual cleanup of these loops. In edge mode, I'm going to grab all of the loops vertically and then hit the space command on loop tools. And that has evenly spaced them. Then we're going to go and get all of them horizontally, which I think if we use select similar shift G, we can do direction and that gets us everything. And then we can hit space again. Now this isn't quite clean because space evenly distributes the loop between the first and last point and our tops and bottoms aren't quite aligned. So for the bottom, I know I want this to be totally flat on Z. So S Z zero and the top, I want to have slightly tilted. So I'll just use the flatten command or I could do S Z zero and then rotate it, I suppose. And the shrink wrap is distorting that a little bit. A nice trick when working with shrink wrap is just duplicate it, disable one, apply the other one. And now, since it's not making as big a change, if I disable it, it's not snapping back somewhere strange. Now we can finish our cleanup. It looks like something we did lost us these points. I think that these need to be removed from the shrink wrap. Yeah, when I applied the shrink wrap, it made these unhappy. So we remove those from the group. And at this point, we can remove all of these um, edge points because these aren't going to get affected much by what we're doing. Now we can snap the cursor back to the world origin and use it as a median point to realign these SX0 and SX0. Then check our loops at the top and bottom, make sure we're happy with those. This time the shrink wrap isn't messing them up. And now we can repeat the process of using space on these edges. And now our mesh is quite evenly distributed. All of our loops are looking pretty nice. Now we'll apply that shrink wrap fully and give our, ourselves a mirror modifier. And now we can go in by hand and do any spot cleanups. So I'm going to turn off vertex groups. So anywhere I feel like it needs to come out a little bit, let's use uh, Alt S to shrink and fatten, because I want this to conform to the body underneath, but it is supposed to be a stretchy fabric. So it should have a little bit of where it, you know, it's stretched over here. It shouldn't pull back towards the body on the inside too much. Let's just spend a minute tweaking some of that. You could of course go to sculpt mode and do this there, or, you know, whatever tools you're happiest with. And it shouldn't be falling in here quite this much, you know, depending on how tight you think the skirt is supposed to be. Bit of edge slide. Back a bit. You can do whatever amount of tweaking satisfies what you want your skirt to look like. And if you do a bunch, then you can repeat the spacing whenever you need to. Also grab all of our horizontal loops and do a flatten. And some of these areas where it's still clipping into the body, this isn't a huge deal because in the end, we're going to have a subsurf on here and also have subsurf on the body. So it's not uncommon to have little bits poke through. But if you make sure that nothing is poking through, even when you have no subsurf, then you definitely won't have clipping. So it's not a bad thing to work on some of these areas a bit more. The 
the smooth brush in sculpt mode is also pretty effective for this. Now we can start rigging. Got our rig back here. And of course, these are the Rigify Rigs FK bones, but we're actually concerned with the deform bones, these three, the spine and the two thighs. Now we could rig this skirt directly to the thigh bone, but then that will deny us certain controls. So we're actually gonna add some new bones into the rig instead. And those bones will be children of these thigh deform bones. Now this didn't actually mirror properly because mirroring only works. Uh, it doesn't work when you're creating a new bone. So I'm gonna turn mirror off and copy that with a shift D, then do control M. Now well, first I have to set my pivot point to 3D cursor in the center, then do control M X and that's mirrored. Make sure there's no roll. And now I can turn mirror back on and these will, well, they don't have the right names yet. Got to name them Deform Bone. So sticking with Rigify's normal name scheme, I'll start it with Death. Copy and paste that over to the other bone, but end it with dot .r. And now they're linked and mirror properly. So anything else I do with these will behave correctly. And we can turn off axis display. So these are the bones we'll actually be weight painting to in the front of the skirt. I'm going to shrink them down Visual origins, 0.5, then duplicate it, shift D, and then scale it back up by two. And this is going to be not a deform bone. This will just be skirt front dot L and dot R. And this smaller bone, the deform bone, is going to be a child fit. Select the uh, smaller bone first, then skirt front, control P, keep offset. Now if we move these, it moves the deform bone. Now I'll re-enable Rigify's deform bone layer so that we can parent this to the thigh deform bone, control P, keep offset again. And if I turn the FK on, now it moves together. And then we can hide all that. Now, back in edit mode, we're going to grab this, keep mirror on, shift D to copy it, and make a version for the rear. And I leave these lined up on Y just so it looks better when you're looking at it in front view. You don't have to see them overlapping each other. And these all need to be renamed to the rear version. Or maybe you should use back. And since they've been duplicated, they're all stuck with a 001. But once you've named one, then you can just and paste it. That should be dot R. And that should be dot L. Did I mess up the names on these? No, I didn't. I messed up the names on these. Okay, that's working now. Next, to make these a bit easier to work with, I already have some custom shapes created. Over here, I've got CS skirt front and back. I suggest making something similar to this, but that's a matter of personal preference. Go in and add that to each to the larger bones. I guess I should have done that before I duplicated them, but. You need different ones for the front and back anyway, so it's not a huge deal. And I think I'll actually scale these smaller ones down even more just so that I don't end up accidentally clicking on them. But I still need to see them because those are the bones that actually get the weight paint. Now it's time to get to the weight paint. I'm going to duplicate this skirt object and leave a copy of the base version before we get started. And we'll need to re-enable our deform bones. We can hide the thigh bones. We just need the spine. 
And of course, our skirt needs an armature modifier aimed at this rig. Now, if we put the rig into pose mode and select the skirt and go into weight paint, we can select the rig bones and start painting. If you have a deform bone selected and you start painting, it will automatically create a vertex group. For this spine bone, I want it to affect most of the mesh. I'm going to get my add brush, make sure it's at full strength, and actually turn off front faces only. And if I hold down Alt while I drag, it creates a gradient. But I actually want it to be full up to this loop, so I'll start it after that loop. And now it's just going to fade to the bottom there. And that's created deaf spine. Now I'll be sure to turn front faces only back on so I don't accidentally paint through the mesh. And select my skirt front L. I'm just going to click basically anywhere and it creates the group, but it's mirroring within the same group. I need a dot L and a dot R. So I'm just going to add a new empty group and change that to a dot R and the mirror modifier has automatically separated those because it is designed to work like this. And same thing in the rear. And now our groups are ready. Let's also note that I'm painting with auto normalize enabled. What this means is that when I paint anything on this bone, it will subtract the same amount of weight from other bones that have it. It's automatically added weight here because these are the only two bones that are affecting this area of the mesh. So when weights are normalized, it means that all of the values between all of the bones add up to one. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill out the area that should be affected by this front bone. Go all the way to the middle. In the middle, it's only 0.5 because it's being shared 50% between the mirror of this bone. So don't be surprised by that. And actually, I suppose I've destroyed my gradient a bit, but we'll get that back when we start blending. I want to make sure I don't flow onto those loops. And for the back, it'll be the same process. By the right brush. And it can take multiple clicks because there is fall off around um, its full strength at the center of the brush circle, but it has fall off around the edges. So that's a rough block in of the weights. Now that our basic weights are blocked in, let's check in and see what this is doing so far. If we try moving a leg, we see that it is moving the right area, but it's running into that too harshly. So now we can leave that and go back into pose mode or white paint mode and start some blending with our blur brush. And this is at full strength at the moment. And I'm using, I'm not necessarily putting the center of the brush on the point just so that I can keep these shapes making sense. Of course, I can't cross over the center line of the mesh because that's the other side of the mirror modifier. If you apply the mirror modifier, you could blur across the center, but you don't really need to. And I also have auto normalize on still. So when I blur the edges of this leg bone, it's also blurring the edges of the overall uh, spine bone. In fact, it's a bit easier to do the blurring from the spine bone than you can just go along the whole thing. And for reason, uh, yeah. This area blurs a bit slower because that point is the center line. It's technically blurred between both sides and the uh, spine. So that's looking a little better now, and we can keep adjusting this and do a little bit more blending. I know from setting this up previously that we do end up wanting this spine bone to come basically all the way down to uh, the very bottom loop. And of course, since what the blur brush does is it averages the bones out until you have um, half the weight of the previous adjacent loop. So that's why, even though I'm doing this quite a bit on these vertices down here, it's not going all the way to red, of course. Isn't quite going. There's something in weight paint mode when you're painting with a pose where it doesn't always register quite right. I don't actually understand the details of that. There's all kinds of stuff going on.
Now we'll need to work on the exact details of that blending more later, but let's add the next part of our setup first, as we won't know exactly what we need until we have more of the stack built up. The next thing is a corrective smooth, which they have renamed to smooth corrective at some point. For this, we will want a factor of one. Uh, repeat five is all right. Since we're using a mirror modifier, we will need to um, use it on bind mode. And bind it. And I'm going to go ahead and set up a vertex group with everything in it. I know we're going to end up needing it. And assign that. Now, when we move this, things suddenly look actually pretty nice. Look at that. And of course, if we toggle it off, we can see exactly what it's doing. It's smoothing out the more stretched areas. Some that's a big improvement already, but it's going to need more than that. It's coming up too far in the front, and it's clipping in the back. If we move it back, and it's stretching there, and it's clipping there. So we're still going to need quite a bit more to make this functional. Where it is working nicely is right here, actually. So we'll pick one of those not-so-great pose angles. Yeah, it's gaining extra up here. The more I move this, the more of that's moving. That's pretty weird. Let's get back into weight point mode now that we have the corrective smooth on. So I should duplicate the skirt again at this point too. And let's see how we can improve this now. Go into wireframe so we can see a little bit better. And let's do some more blending. We can see things moving in a response to our blending. I think, let's get this, this bone we want to have a little stronger back here, so add brush at full strength. Now normally I would tell you to never weight paint with corrective smooth on because it distorts what you're seeing, but in this case it's fine. Let's see, we don't want that going that way. Get our front bone. Oh, actually, this is a good time for taking our add brush at a fairly low factor. We can click a lot to get it on there. Then I actually get rid of most of this guy. This area will need some special attention. That needs more weight from the spine to keep it from coming up so much. So that'll be some more of the add brush at a low factor. And you can select individual vertices if you need to restrain it. Why it's not letting me paint on that one. If we get rid of the pose and go back in, then it works. So. There's some sort of auto masking or something going on, or maybe it's not quite respecting the um, pose shape of the mesh. But either way, fast forward through this. I know I'm going to want to bring the weights down in a shape like this for the spine bone in front and fill up some of those center loops. And it. Don't need as much of it on the sides. I think I can go into edit mode and remove these side points entirely from depth spine. Now we'll just do some tweaking. We'll put it into a pose, see how things look. You can turn the corrective smooth on and off as needed. Let's try to get this area to be a decent height above the leg and not scrunched like this. We'll start with the blur brush, blur some of that down. We 
switch it back and forth. Looking pretty good there. Went a little bit too low, so I'll switch back here and with my very low strength ad brush, we'll bring some of that back up. And on those points, this points up to something weird. You can also select a single point, go to item, and see what vertex groups are on it. And somehow this got some of the back vertex group. That's the problem. So we'll just delete that. And now it's behaving properly. So I must have painted through at some point. Let's make sure more of those are there. Let's go to uh, back. Yep, a couple more of them got back on them. There we go. I've got to keep an eye out for that kind of thing. That's behaving pretty nicely at this point. And if we turn Creative Smooth back on, it's pretty good here, but now it's clipping into the thigh there. But we'll let that stand as it is for the time being, and let's fix up the back a bit now. Back will have to go into this mode to see properly. Keep track of what's where. Let's make sure none of this got back there where it shouldn't have. A little bit did. So we can. Grab some of those points. Don't have the front selected, and just remove those from the back, uh, from the front L group. Yeah, we want those. We want these to be a blend between uh, front and backbone. But I've let too much of the spine get on there. Delete that again. This is the difficult part of weight painting is you can basically fix something and then create the same problem again a minute later and keep doing that over and over. So you gotta be careful. And correct and smooth, that's looking okay, other than clipping into the rear that much, but we'll be solving that via a different method. I do want to get that corner behaving a bit better. I think that's about done it. All right, we'll keep tweaking things later, but for now we can move on to the next main feature that we're gonna add. So if we re-enable our corrective smooth, we can see that it's working pretty well on the shape in some places, but the problem is even though it's a decent shape, it is pushing some of our vertices below the surface. So we need to prevent that somehow. Now we could add more bones and do more tedious weight painting, but it's easier to solve this with more modifiers. In this case, we're gonna add a new strength wrap and set it to target normal project, which is the highest quality, and outside. And for the offset, we're going to use 0.008. So this has given us our mesh some distance from the body and it, uh, Using it on outside specifically aims to move vertices below the surface above it. But it's doing a bit too much of it in some places, so let's set up a new vertex group for it. And for that, let's uh, duplicate the skirt model again. I'm going to select everything except these top two loops. And this will become and now we'll be able to control its strength. And let's get this loop only and blend that a bit. Otherwise it's messing up the waist distance, which doesn't really need any help because it's not deforming. We can also see that it's pulling some of these points here to the body, but we're actually going to ignore that. We could remove it from the weight group, but it doesn't really matter. 
let's see what it's doing when we actually pose it now. Ah, much better. We toggle that on and off. It is solving our previous problem of the mesh falling under and into the thigh. And now that's behaving pretty well up there. And in the back, it's also solving a bunch of our problems to the point that this stretches and doesn't really have enough vertices. And same if we go back this way. Now it has introduced a new problem, which is that now many of these points are too far from the surface. We can help that problem by adjusting the distance of the offset down a bit, maybe. That helps the front, but then it opens up problems in the back. So we're actually going to leave it high because we want the offset to be the maximum amount it needs to stay above the surface in most areas. And instead, we're going to help this problem with a second shrink wrap. This one outside. This one will be shrink wrap surface. So this one is to make sure things stay on the surface. So we want on surface target normal projection. And I'm going to set it to our previous shrink wrap group, which I will now rename shrink surface and drop down here. And of course, I guess I have to reassign that then. It needs a strength, which I'll set there. So now what we can see is that this is uh, bringing the mesh back to the surface in some areas. So between the two of those, we now have two vertex groups to work with to control the amount of shrink we have in any given area. And now we can do some weight painting on the shrink surface group to get it to behave better. To know that I don't need it here. Don't really need it around the waistband. That's not being affected. And we don't really need it on most of the back either, because the, the surface is actually sticking these points back under. I'm going to raise it to there, and then we will blend it out a bit. We do want it on the whole hem of the skirt, though. That full strength there. Blend it in here a bit. Now we don't want to go too much into the middle here because then it's trying to stick the middle to the leg and we can see that it's shrinking in all the time, which we don't want. So let's make sure we get it off these loops. And those ones too, these places where the leg, is, where the uh, skirt is kind of over open space, we don't want it. I'll keep a bit of it just in the middle there, I guess. Fine. And we we'll blend it a bit. Now let's check in on how the rig is behaving. That's definitely making progress. How is going on up there? Let's not fix that little bit. Something got up there. Is it this bone? Or is it the corrective smooth? So to troubleshoot that one spot, we'll disable that shrink and then that one and the corrective smooth. Yes, it's the corrective smooth doing it. So we will subtract of this area from the corrective smooth. As we shouldn't really need it on that waistband anyway. We have some bad deforms that we can do some spot fixing on as well. Stable those. Out, leave them on, and let's see, do we need some blending? Uh, 
That's not really affecting it. Ah, it looks like we got a little bit of that there. Ah, that's cleaner. And how clean you try to get the mesh to be is kind of up to you. But now it is behaving fairly nicely. Now that the overall setup is pretty much working, let's see about improving this shape and some of these deforms a bit more. This area I'm still not crazy about. And part of it is that a bit of a weird shape there. Now we'll duplicate the skirt again to keep it back up. Some of these will shake out with subsurf. We'll look at that more in a minute. But that is another layer of smoothing we effectively are going to get. But I think what I'd like is even more corrective smooth on this layer to mimic a stretchy fabric. Because if we look at from the middle, we kind of have a hard angle here where this should really pull up more. So let's get ourselves a second corrective smooth. Duplicate this one. And this one we will set to repeat 15 times. And make sure we reset the pose before I bind it. And we're going to give it a fresh vertex group. We'll start it out with an empty group. And should we bind it? I'll raise this. And let's do some weight painting with a very low strength brush into this group. And as we start painting, we can see we have some more smooth in this area that we have quite a bit of control over because we're using a high strength effect at a low factor. So we can potentially take this very far if we want. Take a look at how it's looking without these. And we're going to want some on the back as well. Quite a bit back here. It's pulling that back. And it out of it. So that gives us even more areas we can tweak to adjust exactly what the skirt is doing. So this isn't a huge effect, but it does help. And if you go to more extreme angles, it's helping quite a bit. Now let's do a review. It's still improving. We've got some issues that we'll have to come up back to. That mesh isn't quite smooth there. Let's take a look at how it holds up at each extreme angle. Looking pretty good there. Looking pretty good there. But it's front here. We are having some problems in the back still. If we move back, that holds up well into a, a point and then it totally flips out. But that's probably about as far as we can expect it to go anyway. And it's looking all right. Let's see if any of these get considerably better with subsurf on now. With subsurf on, the front works very well, and we can even wiggle it around on Z axis as well. It can make it all the way over here before it starts to have problems. And that far out. So, subsurf is helping quite a bit, especially in these areas that get pinched, but not the back, which I don't expect it to. So the reason the back isn't behaving well is something that we mentioned before, which is the corrective bones we have. The back is actually behaving normally. What's weird is that the body is getting this extra motion. If we disable these, then it's fitting to the body just fine. So what we need to do is add some weight from these rear corrective bones onto the skirt as well. If we hide that and look at the body, we can see that they have about that much weight, which is very little. It's like in the point 0.1 area. So we won't need to do a whole lot. We'll continue our habit of copying the skirt first. Let's disable all our modifiers for a moment so we can really see what's going on. And we'll select that. 
have that in create paint mode. And now if we start adding with that with our very weak add brush, we can see it start to make a difference. Let's throw a bunch on there. Then of course we'll want to blur a bunch of it. Try to keep our loops doing sensible things. And as before, we need to mirror the groups properly. Now that's working. And now let's turn our modifiers back on. And our corrective main is really giving us trouble here. So what we need to do is go into the main corrective smooth group and reduce its strength back here. So let's just start subtracting. And we can see that helping pretty fast. Get our shrink wraps on. See, ah, that's brought it close enough to the surface that the shrink wraps can uh, get it outside now. So let's try to make that cleaner. Blend it a bit. Okay. We don't want it to be completely not operable without the shrink wrap. Let's try to figure out what's giving us this trouble up here too. It's the corrective smooth that's on this particular loop. So we will eliminate that entirely. But I think we can actually bring it back on this very top loop. Blend that out a bit now. Because as it smooths, it's pulling it all the way down to match that. And yes, we need to bring back some of the shrink outside up top. Didn't have that either. And let's make sure everything is on. Give it a little bit more strength. And we need to balance out giving it strength and removing corrective smooth. If we do too much of one or the other, it might get weird. We also have to keep an eye on our shrink surface. If that's yes, that's giving us some trouble. So let's also reduce that a bit. That's a problem on the edges. Ah, that's actually causing quite a bit of the issue. Go too far, then we open up issues there because this is weak up here. So we're just adding and removing little bits from different groups at a time to get the desired effect. It's not the most fun way to work, but it does work. Pay attention to what our corrective smooth stretch is doing as well. That's not causing us any trouble. Yeah, I think that's probably about as far as you don't want to move this anyway. So, a little tiny bit more up there.
We're letting the thigh bone pull this down a bit too much. That's why we're getting this problem. There's one stubborn point that doesn't want to be affected. Anyone can tell me why that happens, that would be very nice to know. Still doing it. There we go. Now it's happy, finally. Let's look it over. It's behaving well there. Bring it forward, it still behaves well up to a point, but that's about as high as it's physically possible to raise your leg anyway, so. Not so great there. We could still do some more work on the corrective smooth group. The we have too much or too little? A little bit too much. There we go. Now from behind, behaves well. If you go far enough this way, the shrink wrap freaks out, but that's because the body underneath is clipping itself. So that can't be helped. If you want, to, at that point to improve it, the body rigging has to improve and the body really can't handle that. I'm not sure, not sure how far anyone can really raise their leg like that in real life though. That area is a little bit unhappy, but I think it's within tolerance. Now we can move to the last main feature we're going to add. Currently, the skirt has a major problem. As the leg rises, the skirt stays in the same place relative to the leg. But what should really happen is it should pull up a bit. And since we have rigged it with separate bones from the normal thigh bones, we can make that happen. It's pretty easy to do if we just scale these bones in a bit. Grab both of them. So what we're going to do is use an a driver to automate scaling these bones in when the leg is raised. Let's open up a driver panel. And we're going to add a driver to the Y scale. I'll work on it over here so we can actually see what we're doing. For this driver, we're going to need the X and Y rotation of the thigh to form bone, or X and Z rotation. So the object doesn't let us eye drop. No, it did, it did let us. It doesn't show up properly. We'll get thigh one and need the X rotation in local space. That to XYZ Euler. Name that X. And we'll copy and paste that so that we can easily change that to the Z rotation and name that Z. The bone has gone a bit crazy, well, to zero scale because there's nothing in our expression. So let's put a one there to restore it. And now we need to have it get shorter as rotation amount gets higher. So let's subtract the Z rotation. And it got longer instead of shorter because currently we're subtracting the value in radians it has a 62 degree rotation, but that's a bit over one in radians, but it's a negative rotation. 
So that means when it rotates in a negative direction, it'll actually get longer at the moment, and in a positive direction, it'll get shorter. But we need it that any rotation gets shorter. And for that, we need to use the absolute value of z. And we can get that with the expression abs. Now, since this value is over 1, the scale has gone negative. So we need to reduce that amount a bit. Let's have the z. And now we're going to about, well, if we set this to 60 degrees, it looks like we are at about 0.5 scale, a little less than 0.5 scale at 60 degrees. So we can adjust this amount we're dividing by if we want a different amount, but this looks like it'll do for now. Now let's get the same setup for the x-axis. Set this to a pretty high amount. 70 is good. It shouldn't really go much further than that. So if we just add the absolute value of x, then it gets longer because our order of operations is now wrong. It's adding that after this previous operation. We need an extra layer of parentheses. And now it's going crazy because the x is a pretty high number. So we could divide that, say, by 3. And that looks pretty decent. Now let's see what happens as we move this around. It also gets E-rotation. Now we have a combination of both X and Z, which has caused it to pull up even more. And this is a good time to take this driver and copy it to the back. And now we can get the full effect. That looks like it's doing pretty well for us. We are having some bad behavior right now, but that is actually because a bunch of Y rotation got in there between doing all this. If we rotate this on Y to line the leg back up, then it's behaving better. So, there are going to be problems with this rig if you go really too far to the extremes. Like, there's the shrink wrap freaking out. Now let's get that driver copied over to the other side. And of course, we're going to need to change these to be the right side of each of these. And then we can just copy and paste it again. Now it should be symmetrical. Excellent, we are feature complete. Now that we have another feature in place, let's inspect everything again and see if there's any problem areas. I also noticed that previously I didn't have corrective smooth enabled on the body, and I'm also going to turn on the full subdivision so that we can check out the whole stack. Looks like there's a little bit of weakliness here. We'll come back to that in a moment. It's hard to judge exactly what is happening here with the volume. I think there's maybe a little bit of extra here, so weights could be reduced on the corrective bone, but I don't think it's a problem, really. This is making it further back here before it starts running into problems now that I have corrective smooth and subsurf enabled on the body, but it will still hit them eventually. But other than that one spot in the front, I think we are in good shape. This little problem with the hemline is being caused by the interactions between our two corrective smooth modifiers. I know that's the case from experience, but if we turn off these, we can see it in practice. This is because if we check the weights, this corrective smooth isn't really affecting this point because we don't want it affecting it vertically, but that also means it's not affecting it forward and back, which brings it out of alignment here. So I know if we adjust this group, we're just going to introduce problems. But let's see what we can do with the second corrective smooth, which is bringing it forward, but too much. So I'm going to decrease the strength of this a little bit, and we can see that is bringing that point back. And I'll blur it a small amount, like just that point, and maybe it's neighbor, and get just a little bit on those. And maybe reduce this one by a little bit, just doing very small nudges here. And now that edge is smooth. We don't have that wave anymore.
We are finished with the setup. So let's do a quick recap of how it all goes together. We have our armature, which gets our mesh into the rough position, but does have problems in some areas. These could be fixed with further corrective bones, but the modifiers are enough, so I haven't bothered. If you had a more complex setup where the modifiers weren't enough, you could add another corrective bone like we have in the rear on the side here to pull this mesh out as the leg raises. After the armature, we have our first corrective smooth, which helps the cloth behave better. It stops some of the clipping, but in other areas it introduces more. Overall, though, it makes the skirt behave more like stretchy fabric. The areas where the corrective smooth introduces problems are fixed by the outside shrink wrap that pushes the mesh above the surface of the body, but in some areas it goes too far, so a second shrink wrap to surface brings those back to the proper distance. We then have our second corrective smooth, which is right, it's before the shrink wraps in the order, but it's easier to think about in this order. And this gives us a small spot fix on this area that is stretched between the legs and isn't shrunk to the surface. And lastly, we have subdivision, which makes everything smoother and cleaner and lets us get away with not having perfect weights. And let's not forget that on the rig, we also have these corrective bones in the back, which help with uh, preserving volume in the rear. And these are necessary because they're influencing the body mesh underneath. You might still need something like this if you were preserving volume on the body with corrective shape keys or whatever other method. Whatever you put on the body, expect to need to have something similar on the skirt. We also have our drivers that simulate the skirt pulling up the leg a bit as it raises. And we can adjust these bones manually in order to get a slightly different pose or a slightly different amount of ride or to repair problems if we go to uh, extreme enough poses that we start getting in trouble. If you wanted, you could take this sort of dress even further. For example, you could add another floating bone that gets a mix of the transforms of these two to govern the middle, which would give you more control there, rather than just being at the mercy of corrective smooth. If this was a longer skirt, you could expect to need to add more things like that to give even more control. Also, as I mentioned, a hip corrective bone would mean that the corrective smooth and shrink wrap were doing less work. Or you could even look into adding some hooks to control the mess more. I'm not going to cover those in this video, but it, perhaps in future characters with more complex outfits. If you were building this skirt set up for your own character, the next step would be to duplicate the skirt and make a detail mesh version that you would then surface to form back to this clean topology. That's all for this video. If you found this helpful, feel free to leave a comment, and if you have questions, feel free to ask either in the comments or you can contact me on my About page. This demo file we've been working in will be available on Gumroad for a few dollars and also to anybody who signs up to my Patreon at at least a tier 2 level through the end of May 2021. Please consider picking up the file or becoming a patron if you want to help me continue making more content. But I'll also be happy just with a like and a subscribe. Thanks and I'll see you next video.